Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. You are watching our Cloud School. Today in this video, we are going to discuss about for each activity with Azure Data Factory. So in our previous videos, we have learned how to use get metadata activity, how to use filter activity. Now in conjunction to those activities, we would like to continue our demonstration and we want to use an activity which can run on a collection and iterate each item of the collection and for that reason we have to have used an option or the activity which is available in Azure Data Factory the activity name is for each so let's jump to the demonstration and we will continue the same implementation which we have used in our previous demonstration but this time using for each activity so here is my Azure Data Factory instance, which I'll be using for the demonstration. I'll be creating a new pipeline and the objective of the pipeline is to basically create a new to copy each file, which is of a specific type, but not using the copy activity is straightforward, but using the get metadata activity, filter activity, and then for each activity. So let's first of all get the information about all the files which are available and we can get it with the help of get metadata activity and here we have to specify the data set which we are looking for. So I'm going to quickly create a data set of the Azure block storage type and I'm going to look for a binary file type as in file format because my files are going to be of different type which is available in this storage account. You can see that CSV zip json whereas i just want to read the file which is basically let's say of csv type and having the name as in this there is a straightforward way of doing the same activity uh, same action using the copy data filter activity but i am going to show you here how to use the for each and that is why we are performing this so next i'm going to select the link service so let's select the link service which we have already have created in the previous demonstration using the link service my data set is going to connect to the block storage container this is the container where we have all of our files and these are the file in which which we would like to deal with it i'm not going to select any specific file because i would like to get the metadata or the child item for each of these files let's click on ok with that our data set is going to be ready which we can click on this and that will give us a link or the information about the data set which we have just now created let me just call it as a binary source right so that's the data source next with the file metadata option we have to specify the field list as we know and the field list i'm going to select the child item as our data set is not pointing to a specific file, we have the option to select the child item. But if your data set is pointing to a specific file, then this child item option will not be available as we know. Next action, I would like to use the filter activity because I would like to apply filter on this activity. The reason for that is now if I let me just run the get metadata activity and then I'll show you why I would like to use the filter activity. So our result of the get metadata activity contains all the files which we have which is these many files i would like to get the information or want to filter out only these many files which are the csv file only and the file which is going to be starting with or contains the number 10 in the file name so let's drag these filter activity and this is the activity which we have discussed in our previous demonstration here we have to specify the collection on which your filter logic is supposed to be run so for the collection i am going to use the previous activity you cannot use the previous activity as of now the reason for that is because we have not set up a link between the metadata and this filter activity so make sure that you set up a link between these metadata and filter activities like this and now if i go to the filter activities items tab items section add new item you can see that we are getting a new tab which is activity output and with that you can get the activity output here in the filter activity now having this in place your filter logic is ready to run on the collection which is a child activity collection 
Next, you have to specify the filter condition, which is going to return a Boolean logic or Boolean output, a Boolean condition true or false. And if it is true, then it will filter out the condition based on the filter logic. Here you can run the logic on the individual items. If I click on this, this is how the individual item looks like. So what I want to do is I would like to run the condition or the multiple condition. Hence, I'm going to use the end operator or the end method. So end of method says that you can apply various number of different different conditions or different different operators and then it will evaluate if both the operators are returning true or not. So here I would like to use the contains method. So let me just check the contains. And within the contains, I can specify the logic to check the item if the item dot name because we have the field name as in the child item contains the property name in which we have the name of the file and I want to see if the file name contains this. Similarly, next file I would like to check at the rate contains. Let me just search it out contains function. I'm going to search for the contains, which is this function. Let me just double click it. And I'm going to use the same function, which is uh, same attribute which is this item and within the item we know that all the file names are going to be inside this and here we want to say actually I don't want to use the contains I'm going to use the ends with right the string function I would like to use and for that reason I'll just remove it and I'm going to use ends with on which you would like to use ends with the name of the file so I'm going to use the file name as an item dot name and ends with let's say dot CSV. So dot CSV, I have added double column. So this is my condition. Just to repeat, if the file name contains this and it is ending with dot CSV, then I would like to filter out the file. So this is my condition. With that, my filter out logic is ready. That should return the two different files which is of type csv right let's evaluate the result of these two activities the activities are completed now my first activity is going to return all the files as we know now the second activity is basically which is filtering out the logic should return only the two files which is containing the number 10 and ending with dot csv and that is what we want now the next activity we want is the for each activity. So I'm going to use the for each like this. So again, we have to join the connection between the previous activity, which is filter and this for each activity. Now for each activity basically runs on the collection. So you have to specify first the collection on which this first for each loop is supposed to be run. So that is something you can specify inside the setting. Because any language you go and use the for each or for loop, it runs on the collection. So you have to specify the items collection. I'm going to again use the dynamic content for that. And as we have linked our filter activity with for each and then so we'll be used able to use our filter activity output. So filter activity output is going to be this, right? Or maybe I can say let me just go and check the output of the filter activity. You can see that we have the output of the filter activity contains a value. So I need to copy this value tag and I'm going to use that value tag inside this items condition. So this is going to be the output. And after the output, I will say that value and the value will on which this activity will work, right? So that is it. If you validate this, it says that it should have at least one activity, which means that within the for each loop, it will run on each item and for each item, what action you want to perform, that is what you have to specify inside your for each loop. And to specify the individual activities inside the for each loop activity, you can click on add new activity that will open the same search box, what you have it on the left hand side activity column. So I'm going to use the copy data activity for this. Let's double click on this 
Uh, so what is it is going to do is it inside the pipeline you are on the for each loop or the for each activity and within the for each activity you have this copy data activity you can have many other activities as well inside the same thing it's like the same what you do with let's say c sharp or java you write logic inside your for each loop you can write a single line or you can have many many lines of code within your for each iteration right so similarly here we have the iteration so what do you want to do we want to write our data set or uh, we want to copy the file right now the file we want to copy so for that we have to specify the data sets so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create new data set here i'm going to specify the file derivative which is the csv because we know that we have to copy the csv file so i'm going to call it as an source csv link service is the same link service i want to use it keep the header as is then file container i'm going to specify the file container as this right but here i'm not specifying the file name so let me just click ok that will create the data set which we want to use copy the data or copy the file right here it will copy the file from this source and the destination which we want to use again destination i'm going to write the destination at the blob storage the same csv file same link service and then i am going to use the same container as well but in that specific case what i'm going to mention here is i would like to create my output inside the output folder so i'm going to have an output folder inside this input container and my file should be written inside this right so let's click on ok so that should basically create so i was getting this error that you cannot specify the file path here so uh, or the folder path here so i have just removed that now my source is ready my file uh, and destination is also ready but where are we using those for each loop because we are not mentioning let's say if this is going to run two times for two different files it will copy two different files and that is something we do not want so what we want we want this copy data activity to use an activity for a specific file name right and for that reason what i'm going to do is i am going to specify the file path as in prefix and here i'm going to say that use the file name as in the dynamic content and from here dynamic content i am going to say use the current item which is the name of the file so it will use the from this container whatever is the current item name which is the name of the file it will use that specific file name right now as we are right now under the value section if you remember so under the value section you have the value as well as the file type and item returns the collections hence we have to write the name like this so that basically it returns the name of the file right so that is the name of the file we want to do or uh, we want to write now if you go back to our open destination section at the destination i am going to say write the file inside my output container and let's validate our pipeline so let's validate all our pipeline is successfully validated now just to revise here on the copy data activity the reason i have mentioned the items dot name the reason for that is if i go back to our activities run which is this run you would see that under the value we have the name and value at the rate item will represent this particular block for each item this item is going to be this is going to be one item next item is going to be this now from and each item i would like to retrieve the name attribute hence i have to give at the rate item dot name so that it will retrieve the value of this so in your case in your json object let's say if, or in your file object if you are retrieving any specific properties you have to go to that level let's say the object then the attribute name then the child attribute name and things like that and that is how you have to specify the values now with that my copy activity is ready so we have got metadata filter and then on the filter i would like to copy the activity to the destination location so i am expecting a output folder to be created here which will which can copy these two files basically 
So let me just run the pipeline on a debug mod. So I'm going to run it. The run has started. So now it's running the uh, our filter activity is completed. Uh, it's running the for each loop and it's running the copy data activity as well. So as we have two files, so it's going to run two instances or two time the copy activity, right? Our copy data activity is also completed. Now, if you look at here, it, it uh, for each instance is going to have a single copy data activities. So the next copy data activity is this. Now, if we refresh here as an output, you would see that you have the output file and within the output file, those two files are copied, right? And that is it uh, we are looking for from this demonstration perspective. So we have learned how to use the for each loop or the for each activity on the data factory. Just to revise the each activity will run on the collection and this is the collection we are looking for and within the activity we can have the different types of activities like uh, copy data activity we have used it here right so that's it in this demonstration i hope you would be able to learn uh, i hope you would be able to use the for each activities with your data factory pipeline and you would be able to play around the collection and your logic and your data factory if you find it useful if you find it useful please do consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already thanks for watching it see you in the next video